animations were made using the Animate Diff extension for Automatic 1111. Now if you haven't heard of Animate Diff, it is an extension that's been out for quite a few months now. It's been getting a little bit more love recently because the recent models that have been coming out for it are beating the other animation AI generators. For the last few months we've had Gen 2 come out, we've had Pika Labs, plus quite a few other animation generators. The only problem with those is half of them are free, half of them are paid for. The ones that are free want you to keep a logo on it and the ones that aren't free, they're not so great that it justifies having to pay for them. Now with Animate Diff, we're getting far more updates lately, which is great because it means that we can get some consistent animations. The only thing is people are expecting to be able to put in a prompt or a reference image Click a button and all of a sudden you've got an animated show. That's not how this is going to work. You will need to have some sort of artistic abilities. Usually you can get away with using Stable Diffusion on its own, but there's going to be quite a bit of cleanup work when it comes to the in-betweens, which is something that was discussed recently in this Animators React video by Corridor Digital, where Alex Snow talked about being able to use Stable Diffusion to do the in-betweens. So you give it the A and B keyframes and it does your in-betweens. You're going to have to do quite a bit of cleanup work when it comes to this sort of thing. The good thing is that it does the majority of the work for you. So in the cases that I've shown you in the beginning, the one thing that we will need to do is erase the backgrounds because unfortunately I haven't trained this specific model with clear backgrounds or white backgrounds or a green screen background. We're also going to need to make sure that your computer has FFmpeg installed. FFmpeg? FFmpeg? It's FFmpeg, right? Anyways, we're going to have to make sure that that's installed in your computer. We'll start off with a clean installation of Automatic 11.11. First thing we need to do is go into the settings and we'll click on optimization and make sure to have pad prompt, negative prompt and batch conditional unconditional checked. Once we've done that, we'll click apply and we'll restart the UI. Now we're going to need to install Animate Diff, but along with Animate Diff, we're also going to need to install Control Net, Prompt Travel, and the Forum. The Forum is optional, but if you're going to be using the Interpolation option in Animate Diff, you're definitely going to need it. So we'll go into Extensions, Available, Load From, type in Animate Diff, and click Install. Next, we'll type in Prompt Travel and click Install. Search for the Forum, and let's install that too. Let's search for Control Net. It'll be right down the bottom. It's the second last one, and click Install with that. This one's going to take a little bit longer. Now keep in mind with Control Net that the models are quite hefty, so it may take a little bit of time if you haven't downloaded them yet. I'll put the link in the description. Click on install and apply and restart. Now let's go into the Animate Diff folder, the models, and save all the Animate Diff models in there. And we'll do the same for the Control Net models. You don't have to download all the Control Net models, but when it comes to Animate Diff, some of them do come in handy, so it's good to have at least a few of them. Let's open up Animate Diff. The interface is extremely simple. First thing we'll do is load up one of our models. I like to do the V15V2. It's the latest version of the original one, but there's quite a few other ones that are pretty decent as well. Let's enable it, select the number of frames we want, and the frames per second. I like to save the GIF, MP4, and PNG. You'll notice that the GIF is the only one that has a preview. For the MP4, you'll have to actually go into the folder itself. At the bottom, we have the option to load a video source. What's going to happen is when you load that up, it'll actually change the settings that you have on your Animate Diff. So for instance, it'll change the number of frames according to what the video has and also the frame rate. Animate Diff has only been trained with 1.5, so it doesn't have SDXL implemented yet. If you go to the scripts tab down the bottom, you'll notice that we've got prompt travel already in there. We don't have to activate this. This actually activates once we start typing into our prompt. I've loaded up one of the prompts that I've used in one of the intros. You'll notice that I have numbers running down the side. This indicates to prompt travel what will be happening in frame zero and also what will be happening in frame 21. That way it will actually work its way through the frames and integrate the prompts that you want at those particular moments in the video. Let's say we have 24 frames. You're actually able from frame zero to 23 Add as many details as you want. If in frame zero, you wanted to have a mouth closed, in frame three, you want it to be open. So then you can kind of cycle through that to give the illusion that the character's talking, moving her arms, anything like that. If it's not trained into the model, for instance, let's say opening and closing her eyes, then it will struggle to generate those images. If you've trained your own model, as you've seen in my previous video, 
you'll know that it's good to have a variety of different things, different facial expressions. If you want our eyes closed, it's good to have that as an option. What I'll do is I'll run this as a test and we'll see what we get. Now be patient, this does take a couple of minutes. If you've got a beefy GPU, it might go a little faster, but for the most part, it does take a little bit of time. If you're using OpenPose with ControlNet, it will definitely take quite a bit of time. So depending on the number of frames you got in the video, Go get a coffee, it's gonna take a while. So as you can see, with the prompt that we put in, I wanted her in frame 21 to get kind of muscular and it's actually done that pretty well. Now, as you can see, things tend to appear in the background. It doesn't always happen, but it's kind of glitchy like that. We can work around this by going frame by frame and erasing it, or we can try and train the model to not have anything in the background whatsoever. Now in the next example, I'll show you how to use ControlNet in association with it. What I've done is I've actually downloaded a video from TikTok and of this girl dancing, and I've cropped it to 512 by 512. This way our video won't warp. I've modified the prompt in order to match the fact that we're dancing now and also changed the number of frames to 378 to match the original video and 24 frames a second. And we'll scroll down to control net. Let's load up the first file from the image sequence, enable it, pixel perfect, and allow preview. We'll select open pose and we'll go with DW open pose full. Control net is more important. Let's do a preview of that. If this is the first time you're using ControlNet, it will need to download the preprocessors. It will take a couple of minutes, so just be a little bit patient with that. That's perfect. It's exactly what we need. Let's turn off this image and actually go to the batch processing. That way we'll be able to load all the frames in one hit. And paste in the folder where we have our image sequence. And let's click generate. If it feels like the computer is actually stuck, it's not. It's doing something in the background. Just be a little bit patient. Because we're using ControlNet, this is going to take a little bit of time. It actually has to run ControlNet through all 378 files. So this would be a fantastic time to go get a copy. Don't forget to sign up to my newsletter, sebastiantorres.com.au. Let me know what kind of tutorials you want to see on this channel. So as you can see, it took just under one hour to do these 378 frames. There are some glitches, for instance, the hair and the t-shirt. And we do have a little bit of color variance in the pants, but it's nothing that can't be fixed later on. In this next example, we're going to test our prompt travel's ability to control the image as it goes through the 48 frames. For these 48 frames, I've given it actual instructions. So it's just something simple simple like blinking, smiling, uh, opening your eyes, closing your eyes, that sort of thing. Open your mouth, close your mouth. Now I'd say the easiest thing to do is actually get a notepad and type this stuff up and then paste it in here because sometimes when you click enter in the positive prompt it just starts generating. So just keep that in mind. So we've changed the 48 frames at 12 frames a second. Let's test it out and see what it gives us. I say we lucked out with this one. Aside from the background morphing and shifting, we can actually get rid of the background completely and the character is actually perfect. Now, the reason why I'm keeping it to 24 frames and just a two second loop, most animations like let's say an anime will have looping effect where they'll reuse frames. We're going to take that to our advantage because if we try and do let's say something like a 10, 15, even 20 second animation, this tends to go all over the place. We need to use its limitations and let it work in our favor. In the comments down below, let me know what you think about the possibility of using Animate Diff as an animation tool in the future. Hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think. Bye.